This is Andrew for The Chosen Prime with a quick video review of Toy World TWC-02 Unearth, or otherwise known as their take on a masterpiece scaled scavenger. Um, here you can see it means in its large box. Uh, if we bring in both those of you can see that they are um, in stylized boxes that can be turned into a diorama once we get all six. Here you can see where they connect and also they'll be able to make uh, a diorama or of their what Toy World's uh, Devastator is called Constructor. So in the, in, inside the box for Unearth, um, he is compact, he comes packaged in a nice uh, set of foam. Um, you get uh, instructions, you get a sticker, you get a nice little lenticular card here, and the back uh, has got a part of the Devastator with it. Um, inside the foam here, you can see there's the main figure. Um, we'll go ahead and pull him out. And we'll focus on some detail in just a little bit. Um, like the others, he does come with a weapon. So here's his handgun. He comes with a set of uh, kind of screw covers that you can use to cover his screws in both purple and green if you want. He comes with an extra set of uh, purple links. If you need to replace any parts of his working treads, they give you some extra pieces here. He comes with the uh, drill attachment, the optional drill attachment for his hand option if you want to. Here's his hand. Uh, for their version Devastator. You can see it's um, nice and massive and again I'll do some detail here in a little bit. And then finally he comes with a nice uh, large chunk of forearm. And then when I show the combined uh, mode off later um, I'll show this off in detail. So we'll go ahead and move on to some vehicle detail. Taking a look at Unearth in his vehicle mode you can kind of see that he's got a lot of nice details um, here in his power shovel mode. Uh, lots of nice paint and kind of overall just kind of uh, features kind of throughout it and it looks like a really nice uh, kind of construction vehicle. Um, his shovel here is uh, ratcheted at the base of it. Um, it's got, he's got pistons kind of throughout so you can move the arm forward and back as well as the front scoop here. So you have a lot of options there. By default um, he can't spin due to these locking pegs on the back but if you want to you can go ahead and unpeg these locking pegs and you, then you can have him rotate on a ratchet kind of like the actual construction vehicle in the G1 toy. Um, the final kind of cool little feature about this guy is he does have working treads on both sides. They're individually linked and they have gears. Um, the treads are kind of a rubberier kind of plastic, almost like kind of like the, the tires. Um, and so it's kind of, a, they do stick and they do have friction to them, but most likely when you're going to roll on the, your table with the ground, it's not going to stay. But if you do kind of just, you can kind of see that they do um, fully run. And there's actually kind of a piston mechanism in each leg um, here that kind of keeps them stretched. Um, one quick note is when you do have it in vehicle mode, if you do have issues with it, uh, kind of, uh, kind of clearance, just make sure that the ball joints here at the front are kind of pushed down so you have him lifted up. But overall, I think Toy World's done a really nice job here with, uh, their version of Scavenger, um, in his power shovel mode. So we'll go ahead and, uh, look at the transformation. To transform on Earth, first we come to the back here, and these little tabs here that lock him into place, you want to go ahead and fold them down into his feet. And they do lock the vehicle in securely and in uh, combined mode. So that loosens this up so then you can go ahead and come to this little flap that's under here. You want to go ahead and make sure that it's flattened out. And then take this entire uh, set of legs here and rotate them down straight like this. Go ahead and unpeg the legs. The feet here, they accordion out. So what you would do is go ahead and you would um, kind of rotate them out to the side like this. They are pegged together and so you kind of flay them like this and then they rotate to the front of the leg and the back of the leg. So here we've got the heel and the front. Then you had a little peg that was on the back of the vehicle, you want to go push it up and make his toe. So we come to the other side, come to the other toe, and you want to go and again split it, move the heel to the back, move the front foot to the front, flip up this toe part. You come to the um, these bars on the side, you want to go ahead and lift this up and move that around. And then on the interior, there's also a similar bar. You want to go and lift up on the interior one, slide it back. And then there's a peg on this side and a peg hole here. And you want to go ahead and push those back and lock them into place to kind of uh, hook this bar up behind his knees. So again, come to this inner bar here, lift up just enough so you can rotate it back. Come to this bar on the front. And then just connect the two. And there, since they are his legs ready to go, um, come to the front up here. You want to go ahead and split his arms. And they'll, um, you can see here that they are on a hinge joint. 
So go ahead and slide them both up and they'll lock into place on both sides. Come to these fists here and lift up on this part and fold it over to the front on both sides. And then push this piece down and it should tab into the top of the uh, vehicle there. Come to the um, this part, um, the cab here, and lift up on it temporarily. And then you can go ahead and um, lift up on this panel here up to the top, which will let you free and move the arm out like that. So again, come over here, lift up on this tab, and then the arms can split across. There are two pieces that are holding the arm together, so lift up on this panel here, and there's a similar panel on the bottom. And you're gonna lift up there, and this one folds over flat. So you have this one that's up there, and go ahead and pull. And that's so uh, um, that's the arm um, free. So you want again to come to the other side, lift up on this panel, and fold it over flat, should snap into place. Come to this side, lift it up so it's loose, and then pull the arm out. You can go ahead and come to the front here and slide the arms down and this panel will come, come down and cover the uh, empty hole of the shoulder. You can go ahead and lift, flip out the fist, so lift this panel, fold the hands out, and rotate it into position. He does have individually um, ball jointed fingers and the thumb. So again, lift up this panel, and fold out the hand. Let's go ahead and rotate them around. And these panels here, make sure that they are pegged into these uh, pegs here on the back. Um, the cab, you want to go ahead and rotate it around. And it's on a hinge, you want to go ahead and lift it up so that it kind of hides and it'll kind of securely stick um, behind his uh, back like that. So this next bit here is kind of tricky. Essentially, we're going to need to be able to take this entire assembly here and kind of fold it up and over onto his back. So first and foremost, you want to take this piece and fold it up 180. And there's a ratchet here as well as here. And both of them are quite stiff because of the combined mode. So essentially, you want to go ahead and take it so that it's lifted up this way. Now you want to take these little panels here, which are pegged into the side. So there's a peg hole and a peg here. You want to lift these up to free this up. And then if you see that there's this little L kind of shape here with this piece here, that's when it's in vehicle mode, it needs to compress. But for here, we want to go ahead and kind of extend it so that this is now flat. So now you kind of just pull it out a little bit. So now that this was the L, is kind of straight. Um, you want to go ahead and lift this up to his, um, to up here. And what you want to do is now rotate another 90. Again, it's quite stiff. And you want to make it so that essentially this peg holes on the outside and there's an opening on this side and that's you know your correct way and you want to take the top connector part at the halfway point you want to go ahead and fold it 90 degrees so essentially we want it to look like like that and now we want to go ahead and we can see that there's two pegs on his shoulders that match the pig peg holes here on these uh, shoulder blades and you want to go ahead and just kind of fold this over onto his back and then it'll all peg in um, to those green pegs. Go ahead and come to his head here, and it's just on a kind of little lever or elevator. You want to lift, lift up on it. And there's his head. We come to his uh, torso here, his legs, and you want to take out this uh, little flap here at his uh, crotch. And then you can see that there's a, a tab and a tab hole here. You want to go ahead and collapse his legs, and it's very similar to the um, Combiner Wars version of Devastator. And these are very stiff joints, and it's kind of you got to get this this uh, sandwich just right in order to get the lock into place. And then kind of finally, there's actually two um, kind of tab spots here that match on the waist. So you want to go ahead and just kind of push the waist up into his torso, and it'll lock into place. Come to the uh, scoop here, fold it in on itself twice, and kind of lift it up. And essentially, there is scavenger in his robot mode. Looking at Unearth here and some robot mode details, you can see that he's got a really nice uh, kind of G1 styled head um, that can rotate as well as pivot a little bit. His arms um, can rotate. If you lift this panel up, his um, arms can uh, lift up um, fully. He does essentially have uh, double jointed elbows, um, bicep swivel, his hands can rotate. Um, each one of his fingers is individually on a ball joint. Um, he does have a uh, waist swivel. 
Um, the coolest part of these two arms from Toy World are definitely the way that the legs work, that this still has working treads here, and you still get a nice knee bend in both knees. Um, it's kind of really cool that that's how that works, and it's just a matter of moving this bar. As far as ankle articulation, both his heel and his toe um, can pivot, and he does have a little bit of give here with the ball joint in his uh, waist. And just overall, I think Toy World's done a pretty good job here of uh, making an updated uh, scavenger for Masterpiece Collections. If you want to, you can hold this gun, um, like the other Toy World uh, Constructicons. There's just a uh, kind of peg on his palm that matches the kind of the hole that's here on his gun, and you just take it and peg it in there and kind of close the fists or fingers around it, and you can hold his weapon. To transfer him on Earth into his arm mode, um, I recommend bowling him back into his vehicle mode because he's uh, essentially that's what his arm mode is. Uh, you just got to hook up the arm and kind of move his connector port. So first we come to the underside here and we flip out uh, the connector port. Um, this connector port does have two ratchets in it. It's got one here as well as one here. Um, and they're both very stiff, um, so you might take a little bit of effort to, to kind of move them when you get to the final figure. And also, they'll be able to rotate um, at this hinge. But essentially, what you do is you take the arm part here, and there's actually three pl where places it connects. There's uh, this part, these two pegs here, which will um, peg into the, uh, the front here of the vehicle. You have these two pegs on this part here that eventually it'll fold down and sandwich. But then the trickier part, is actually this uh, kind of window you see. It'll go ahead and it'll kind of latch itself around uh, this part here. And so it takes, it'll fit securely, it just takes a little bit of effort. So I recommend first latching around this kind of part and then kind of pushing up to get these two inner pegs to kind of hook into the front of the vehicle. And again, it takes a little bit of effort and then you'll see that it'll kind of fit there. And then just kind of fold down um, this part here and peg in to those two pegs. And essentially there is, uh, his, his arm is uh, attached now. So we can go ahead and he does with his, uh, you can install the drill. So he does have spring-loaded hands and uh, so you have to push down on the little purple peg here to kind of get things to fit. So you just go ahead and push it down and then um, push the, this, the drill in here and it can spin. Um, being spring-loaded, if you want to, you can push that button and he'll fire out the, uh, the drill if you want to. But then we come and take his hand and again push down to be able to let it go in and then press to click it. And there is his uh, hand installed. Um, as far as uh, the actual arm articulation, um, he does have a rotational joint here as well as a ratchet. As, and then furthermore, the actual arm can go further and you can get almost double jointed um, with the way that the arm kind of splits here. So you get two different types of uh, kind of rotation joints here, which is very cool. Um, the hands are kind of the most impressive thing. Um, each one of them, if you look at the underside, they actually have uh, joints to kind of splay further, which is kind of cool. And even further than that, they actually have a little bit of give here in the, um, the knuckle area so that they actually can either collapse or expand even further. They get some little more give. Um, each one of the fingers is, has individual joints as far as the fingers are concerned, so they look really nice. Um, the thumb, the thumb is on a, a rotation joint as well as a hinge and it has, you can uh, kind of bend it. As far as the wrist, it can swivel. There's a ratchet here too, so you can actually come in and come out with it. And he'll hold these kind of poses. So you get some really, really kind of cool and menacing uh, kind of poses with his fingers here. Uh, if you take the gun, the giant gun that came with uh, concrete, and you see there's a peg, flat peg um, in his palm here that just matches the, the part here on his gun. So you would just go ahead and slide down and plug it in securely and kind of move the thumb here and then take and roll the fingers around you can see how he's going to look uh, quite massive um, once we get the full devastator together this is just a really really impressive kind of hand and arm mechanism uh, probably the best i've seen yet and i can't wait till we can make the full devastator to kind of take advantage of it robot mode comparisons for toy world on earth with some other toy world construct guns that i have these are the first four. We've got Shovel, we've got Concrete, we've got Unearth, and we've got Bulldozer. You can see that this take on uh, Scavenger here is quite nice. I think it's uh, homage to the G1 character very well. And then seeing him alongside the other team members from the Constructicons, I think uh, Toy World's done a really good job of making these masterpiece-styled uh, Tepticons. I'm quite happy with their uh, them all in the robot modes. They seem to hit this nice G1-esque aesthetic with their heads and different parts, but still updated 
and uh, kind of making this nice detailed uh, third-party version of the characters. The demo comparisons, again, here we've got Unearth, Shovel, Concrete, and Bulldozer. You can see that uh, they all look uh, really nice and look like great uh, construction vehicles. They all have their own little different aesthetic across um, all of them. And they all kind of have that nice stylistic kind of set of green and purple. The way that uh, Bulldozer is going to get green treads and, and to complement uh, the purple treads on Unearth. I think they just look really nice uh, all together. And I look forward to getting all six and having all six of the Constructicons from Toy World in their vehicle modes. Robot mode comparisons with other Masterpiece figures. Here you can see Unearth with Prowl and Ironhide. He is taller than Prowl in robot mode, but slightly smaller than Ironhide. So I think he fits this nice scale aesthetic with other Masterpiece figures. And I think stylistically, he looks pretty good here in robot mode um, with official Masterpiece product. And so I think uh, Toy World's done a pretty good job here of making uh, nice Masterpiece scaled uh, versions of the Constructicons. Vehicle mode comparisons for Toy World's effort. Here you can see that in his uh, power shovel mode, he kind of does match the Masterpiece scale of vehicle and looks like an updated version of what you would think Scavenger would look like. And so I think he looks good here in vehicle mode next to these other Autobots. And so I think Toy World uh, has done a good job of uh, making this updated version of the character to fit your Masterpiece collection. Robot mode comparisons for Toy World Unearth with Combiner Wars Scavenger. You can see that uh, Toy World's effort is considerably larger and more detailed than the official Combiner Wars release. Um, but it's still, the one from Toy World still hits uh, enough G1 aesthetics to kind of make it look and feel like a masterpiece version of what you would hope Scavenger would be from this little chest piece to the head to this overall the way the purple legs. I think Toy World's done a really good job here of making this uh, excellent version of Scavenger. Vehicle Como comparisons for the two versions of Scavenger. Here you can see again that the Toy World one is much larger and more detailed than the official Combiner Wars release of Scavenger. You do have a lot more options. Um, with the one from Toy World, you do have, you know, the working treads, you do have a lot more articulate um, shovel front um, compared to the one that's on uh, the official one, as well as how you can actually rotate this one if you wanted versus uh, the official one. And so you can kind of see here um, the size and scale of the Toy World effort in their version of Scavenger. A quick comparison of Unearth in his limb mode compared to Combiner Wars Devastator, you can see that uh, Unearth is considerably larger and more detailed than the one from Combiner Wars. Um, also, he's got a lot more posability and you know, with the multiple ratchets, he actually holds his gun up and such in different rotations. And so you, have, you can definitely see that uh, when we have the full Toy World Devastator put together, um, he's gonna be massive, easily dwarfing uh, the uh, Combiner Wars version of Devastator. Some final thoughts on Toy World Unearth or their take on a Masterpiece Scavenger. I think all four of the Masterpiece Constructor Guns that I have from the company are all built very, very well. They all have really nice gimmicks and designs and engineering, um, specifically for you know the arm bots, the way that they uh, have working treads for legs. I think he's got enough stylistic um, bits from G1 to make him a G1 or Masterpiece version of Scavenger. And I think uh, definitely for size and scale, I think he fits in quite well um, with other Masterpiece figures. We currently at the Chosen Prime have all six uh, Constructicons up for order. Um, we should have the final two to have all six next week. At that time, I'll have a review of their version of Devastator or Constructor. And until then, take care.